world. Most Christians have some vague concept of the power and authority that belong to Jesus, but they cannot put their finger on just how he got his authority or how it relates to them. I cannot think of another truth that has been more foundational to my whole understanding of God's working in my life than the truth of Christ's victorious defeat of Satan. It's impossible to appreciate your position of victory in Christ until you know how he won his victory over your three great enemies. That is, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Three words summarize Christ's acquisition of authority for himself and us. They are crucified, resurrected, and ascended. If you understand no other concepts of the Bible than these three words, you would know enough to live a victorious Christian life. Crucifixion. When Christ hung on the cross with our sins on him, he was not only bearing our sin and its consequences of death, but we were actually hanging there on the cross with him. This complete union with Christ is the incredible truth Paul wants us to fathom in the sixth chapter of Romans. Also in the book of Ephesians, when God poured out his wrath and judgment upon our sins, he not only judged Christ with the guilt of our sins, but he judged us too. When Christ experienced the final sting of sin, which is death, we died too. I have often imagined this hysterical joy that must have swept across hell as news of the death of the Son of God spread. Not realizing that Christ's death was a final nail in Satan's coffin, he mistakenly cheered the crucifixion. You see, many times in Jesus' life, Satan tried to get Jesus to sin so he would be vulnerable to sin's consequences, that is death. When he saw Jesus assume the sins of mankind and then voluntarily die because of those sins, Satan thought he had finally won in his conflict with God. He had cleverly gotten God's first perfect man, Adam, to sin, and now God's second Adam, Jesus Christ, the perfect one, was also bearing the sin and death. There must have been a wild celebration between Satan and his demon hordes for those three days and nights, a real lost weekend. But then a sobering and deadly hush fell over Satan's forces as these astonished beings observed the greatest display of power ever unleashed from the hand of Almighty God. The Son of God was resurrected from the dead, and so were we. Resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 asks, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The defeat of Satan was sealed. With the resurrection of Jesus, Satan forever lost his authority over the humanity of Jesus and over everyone who claims union with him. Just picture the chagrin that Satan must have had before his rebel followers. Far from being the victor, he became the vanquished. He and his hordes were the captives in the victory train of triumphant Jesus. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 says, When he, the Father, had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he, the Father, made a public display of them having triumphed over them through him, Jesus Christ. When the Father, through Jesus, stripped Satan and his demons of their authority, that victory was ours. In Satan's mind, not only is Jesus the, his conqueror, but so are those who are in Christ. Satan knows that he has no legal right to any ground in the life of a believer. But if he can keep us from finding out this truth, he will have a field day in our lives. The verse we just looked at says, Jesus disarmed those hostile powers. That's just exactly what it means. Satan is like a toothless bulldog. 
He can growl and intimidate, but he has no authority to back up his threats in the life of a believer. But if we don't know this or believe it, we will allow him to intimidate us, and he is a master at that. He loves to get Christians to cower or run from him in fear. Satan is a vanquished enemy who must now resort to bluff, threat, intimidation, accusation, and temptation. The believer who does not know and count upon his complete union with the person of Christ in his crucifixion and resurrection is a prime target for these clever attacks of Satan. Ascended with Christ. I said that there are three words that comprise Christ's position of authority over Satan. We've briefly seen what Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection have done to the hosts of hell. The culmination of God's whole redemptive plan was to place Christ on the throne at his right hand, forever putting Christ's enemies under his feet. Any enemy of Christ is an enemy of ours, and anyone put under Christ's feet is put under ours also because we are actually members of his body. How can I say it and make it understood? We are members of his body. We are in Christ. Because of my total identification with Christ in the mind of God, whatever is true of Christ is true of me. Jesus is now seated on his throne in heaven at the right hand of God the center of the greatest power and authority in the whole universe, and we are seated there with him. He has delegated to us the use of the same authority he has and the power to use it over mutual enemies while we are here on earth. Isn't that fantastic? Listen to what God declares in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead and our transgressions made us alive together with him or in Christ, by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him or in him in the heavenlies, in Christ Jesus, in order that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. God has so completely dealt with me, the sinner, and my sins that he has already seated me in the heavenlies in Christ. While I talk to you from behind the desk here in the great state of Texas, I am at the same time seated with him in the heavenlies. We don't have to wait until we die and go to heaven before this becomes true. It's a reality right now. If you have never personally asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and forgive all your sins through his shed blood, do it right now. He will from that moment on clothe you with his own righteousness. Do it now.